We were all getting a bit frustrated watching how bored kids were in school and how many kids were falling through the cracks. And at the same time, we we're watching how passionate kids were when they were playing games, how much energy and attention they brought to these games. And we thought, hey, if we could latch on to that and use that for learning, we'll have something. EDGE, the Educational Gaming Environments Group, is a set of people here at Turk who are, are trying to design free choice educational games. Our research has shown that kids can demonstrate learning through games that they can't yet formalize in school talk. And when a teacher picks up on that and uses examples for that in their class, that really helps with science learning, especially for non-academic kids who are looking for an alternative way to learn. As they get better at the game, they're mastering concepts associated with science content. They're demonstrating an understanding of things like Newton's laws, or bird flight, or how lenses and mirrors reflect and refract light. One of the really exciting things for me about EDGE is that it's designing free choice games. The games have to be fun. They have to be something that people really want to play. We've done games in all kinds of media and all kinds of venues. We have an MMO game, Martian Boneyards, that we studied scientific inquiry. We have wireless games that run on tablets and phones like Impulse, Quantum Spectre, and Ravenous. And we're building outdoor games using geocaching in our STEMlandia program. One of the really exciting things about digital games is that we're able to collect all this back-end click data. And then we analyze it and we try to look for patterns of play, for things that suggest learning or understanding. And it's amazing what you see as kids play the game and as they're talking through the game or teaching another kid the game. As they guide them, they even start to adopt scientific terminology even if the teacher's doing a lesson associated with it. By gaining experience in all these different kinds of games, we're learning so much about game-based learning and how games can improve science education. What started Hedge in the first place is capitalizing on the already broad cultural experience of gaming. I mean, there's, there's references calling gaming the currency of this generation. And so th that idea that it's so pervasive in every aspect of somebody's life, somehow not in schools and not being taken advantage of for social good. So we started this whole thing trying to figure out how to take the natural impetus and natural level of engagement with games and turn it into something that's beneficial for society.